My name is Bob Rowland, uh, and today is uh, July the 20th, 2021, and I'm here with Linda uh, to uh, talk about Hurricane Sandy. Uh, Hurricane Sandy hit, hit the island uh, here on uh, October 29th, 2012. Uh, uh, the eye of the storm actually uh, uh, landed around Brigantine, uh, which uh, we were lucky about that because it was north of us and it seemed that uh, the farther north uh, the storm went, the, the worse the damage was, so we were lucky in that. However, um, we did get a lot of damage here in Strathmere. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the sand dunes on, uh, on the beach held and uh, so the ocean did not come into the town uh, that way. But the, um, but the bays, uh, the, the bay uh, flooded um, very badly and uh, it, uh, it really created havoc, on, uh, especially on the Bayview Drive. Uh, the water actually came into the, into the houses uh, uh, with a depth of three to four feet and, uh, and it ruined the, uh, the drywall, uh, the flooring, uh, all the uh, uh, many appliances and the furniture. And, uh, and it was uh, unfortunately up Bayview Drive. You could uh, after the storm, you could see the uh, the, the street was uh, just littered with uh, furniture and appliances and, and all kinds of trash. Uh, it was it was really too bad. I uh, uh, we were lucky. Our house uh, uh, was high enough, and it uh, it just barely uh, uh, it escaped uh, being uh, and being flooded. Uh, Although, uh, uh, as an example of the strength of the storm, we have a, a small beach house down on the inlet, and the uh, the uh, sandy the flooding from Sandy came through uh, came through our deck down there, and the uh, it smashed our sliding glass door and uh, and uh, pushed out or just uh, uh, eliminated one of the walls. Uh, so and it deposited about four feet of sand inside. So uh, it was it was a very powerful storm. Uh, fortunately, uh, our little beach house was a little more than a storage shed, so it really didn't matter that much. Uh, but uh, and and nobody was seriously injured, which uh, is another good thing. Uh, we uh, after the storm was over, uh, we the uh, the towns, the leaders of the town, and the civic associations got together, as well as the church and. Uh, and evaluated uh, all the damage, uh, and it was obvious, obvious that uh, that many residents of our town needed help. So, so uh, the town leaders and uh, and uh, decided that uh, we needed to have a fund, uh, a fund to help our neighbors. So we created a uh, we created a fund called uh, we had an acronym called SURF S U R F which stood for uh, uh, Strathmere United Relief Fund. Uh, and, uh, this, and we asked for donations from all our uh, Strathmere neighbors uh, to help those in need, as well as all the vacationers uh, that, that came here and loved Strathmere. Uh, so we, uh, we set up this fund, and the fund was administered by uh, four or five uh, of us representing the various civic associations. Uh, uh, Linda Bateman, uh, as president of the uh, Improvement Association here was uh, one of our uh, representatives. And then we had uh, Ed Tedimer, who uh, represented the citizens for Strathmere and Whale Beach. Uh, and Bud Lines, who uh, represented uh, the Fishing and Environmental Club. And, and I represented the church as one of the trustees. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, Gary Orden, who, who grew up here, um, and he was a banker, and he obviously became our treasurer. So, uh, so the five of us uh, administered the fund, uh, and as we as we knew of uh, people who needed help, uh, we uh, we would we would see what their what their needs were, and uh, and we would try to uh, give them uh, a donation uh, to help them. Uh, we collected approximately sixty thousand dollars. Uh, from our from our neighbors and and friends of uh, Strathmere, uh, and we um, distributed um, 
a little over $50,000 to approximately 25, 25 of our, our residents here. Um, and a lot of our residents uh, with such damage, uh, they were actually displaced for a while because, because they, had to, uh, they had to remove uh, the, the, the wall boards uh, to prevent mold and, and an unhealthy situation. Uh, the, um, I guess the, the average donation that we gave to, uh, to most of the residents was uh, about uh, $2,000. And we decided that this was uh, designed to give them money to get started, and especially with the uh, with the remediation company, the uh, pro service. They demanded cash up front, unfortunately. Uh, so, so they needed some cash to get started, uh, and uh, as well as pay some insurance deductibles, and uh, and gave them uh, a little bit of uh, time to wait for their insurance check to arrive, which obviously uh, uh, did not arrive for. For a month or so. Um, let's see. Um, well, I think I think the one thing about Sandy was it was it was a story of damage and turmoil, obviously, to our community. But it was also a story of uh, of caring and help uh, to to each other, uh, and uh, and it just uh, it, it it just showed the. Uh, uh, the strength and and and, uh, and courage of our of our neighbors here in Strathmere and uh, and everybody rebuilt and uh, and repaired and it it was just the resilience of our community uh, which was great. Um, the one other thing I, I need to mention was um, uh, Upper Township. I have to acknowledge that uh, they did a good job of cleaning the streets and taking away all the debris each day that was uh, that was piled up on the streets. Uh, so they did their part, and uh, and we were very grateful for that. Um, and and also the the one good thing about uh, if if there is a good thing uh, was that it brought our community together. Uh, and I, I like to think of our uh, Strathmere not as a town, but as a community, where we know and we care for each other. And and, uh, and I think uh, Sandy just brought everybody together. And I think that uh, that has continued uh, throughout uh, throughout the years. And uh, uh, we uh, we just I think it's uh, one of the great things about about our community that uh, people look out for each other. Uh, and so that is one of the good things that happened uh, with Sandy. Um, I, yeah, I think I think you're right. We we met people that we hadn't known before. That's right. We're, we're also kind of a neighborhood, so we know people on our block or right nearby. So right. that yes. was kind of an, a neat byproduct of that. And the other thing is, we were trying to be anonymous and try to let people have their privacy. But I know a lot of people would say to us. Uh, don't give this to me, there must be somebody else who's worse than me. That's right. And yes. these are people who had been standing in water up to their knees with insulation yes. and their, their personal things floating around. So it was, it, was, it was certainly well received. And I think you're being modest. You really were the backbone of this. You were the iron will. And there were other people in the beginning while we were working out what to do, but well, you willed this to happen. I think the five of us, uh, you know, yeah. we, we, uh, fortunately we did help some people. Um, and uh, and Lynn, as as you said, Lynn, uh, we uh, one thing you I'm sure you did. You walked around the neighborhood looking for people that needed help, mm -hmm. and as you said, a lot were reluctant to ask for help, and uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, looking around, uh, we found a lot of people that needed help, and, and 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 there were other people who not necessarily on the committee, but who helped people later on get the grants for raising or. Help them deal right. with FEMA. Yes. Took in meals, checked up, and say how are you doing? Because it's, it's, it was terrifying personally oh, for people oh, to go was, through yes. it. it was. And there were also are some local contractors in the town. Uh, they did. They offered uh, to help, and they did a lot That's of work right. without e without asking for any payment at all. So, uh, so again, that uh, just just another example of the uh, of the, the people Strathmere and uh, and helping others here. So. Okay. Linda also asked me to talk a little bit about our church, uh, our local church in Strathmere. Uh, it's the uh, Strathmere United Methodist Church. 
uh, and uh, many of the churches in this area are Methodist churches. Uh, but our church, uh, it, uh, we have a part-time minister uh, for the summer. It's only open in the summer season. It, uh, it opens like I think the last week of May and closes uh, the last week in September. Uh, but although it's a Methodist church, uh, it really becomes a very non-denominational church in the, in the summer because we have, we have people from all denominations, uh, Protestant, Catholic, uh, uh, Amish. Uh, we, have, uh, it's a, we, uh, we just have, uh, have an assortment of a lot of people uh, coming to church uh, that love it down here in, in the uh, vacation and on Sundays. We average um, anywhere from practically 20 to 25 people on a given Sunday. Um, and um, last year during the, last summer during the pandemic, uh, uh, the services were conducted on the lawn uh, beside the church, uh, which, uh, which worked out very well. Um, the church, a uh, uh, little history, the church was, church was built uh, and incorporated in 1922. Um, and some of the, um, some of the trustees uh, which you may recognize was uh, what's uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, which I don't I don't know, but the treasurer or the secretary was Carrier Whitcamp, which is uh, uh, a relative of Debbie Whitcamp, now Debbie Vandergriff, uh, and also an H. A. Whitcamp. So the Whitcamps were were very involved uh, from the very beginning, uh, and that's Debbie's family, and uh, and I must say that. Uh, uh, Debbie and, and Butch, uh, they, are, they are the ones who, who maintain and keep, uh, keep our Methodist Church here in Strathmere going. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, years ago the church, uh, the church was in trouble and it was really saved by Butch and Debbie and also Gary Riordan. Uh, the, the Gary and uh, Butch and Debbie, uh, they, they really are, the, uh, are the, uh, the true trustees of the church. Um, and they do a magnificent job. And unfortunately, um, Butch and Debbie are, are leaving. Um, they are moving uh, away from Strathmere, uh, and uh, it's going to be very hard to replace them, but uh, we must. And, uh, but I just, we just need to, to give uh, so many thanks and, and, uh, for Butch and Debbie for keeping, keeping the Strathmere Methodist Church here alive and well. And, uh, Debbie always had uh, had some good music uh, available, and, and and Butch Butch always uh, took care of any kind of a maintenance and uh, and uh, and the well-being of the church. So uh, we we need to give a lot of thanks to both of them as well as Gary. Uh, and we hope that uh, hope the church will continue in the future and uh, and be a, a church here to serve all the vacationers in the future. So. Yeah. Anything, any other stories or recollections you'd like to share before we... Stories or recollections? Um, um, How long have you been here? I forget. We came here in the mid-70s. We, uh, we knew we wanted, a, wanted some place on the shore. Uh, we didn't know where, so we started at Cape May Point, and we visited every town from Cape May Point up to Brigantine. And we uh, we settled on Cape May Point or or Strathmere, uh, and uh, we uh, we started renting in Strathmere in the mid 70s, uh, and we never left. <laughs> so it was, uh, and we bought we bought this house um, in the late well, about two years later. We bought this house. It was actually the only thing available in all Strathmere. I think at that time the taxes were very low, and. Uh, the families just, uh, you know, held on to it or, or, or uh, left it for their heirs. And this was, uh, this was a little, this actually was, uh, I think, an office, an office for the railroad, railroad yard that, that came across the, uh, the bay at that time. So uh, it wasn't very much of a house, it was very small, but, uh, uh, but we managed to, uh, to make it grow. We have uh, we put three additions onto it, and uh, <laughs> we uh, we love our house here now. So 